So polycythemia vera um, is a disease that um, we have been using a lot of the same treatments for many years. And the goal of the treatment is really to, dec right now the goal of the treatment is to decrease the risk of thrombotic events that these patients are at higher risk for. And historically what we've been doing is really trying to control the hematocrit, uh, which is done by phlebotomies as well as cytoreductive therapies for those patients that are considered high risk. And we've been using in a way um, the same drugs for many years. So hydroxyurea is a drug that we commonly use. Um, it's been used for decades. It's very well known. It's, uh, it works well, but it is a chemotherapeutic agent and it has its own issues. Um, in addition, for many years, we've been using a drug called interferon. And over the years, we've had many different, or not many, but a few different uh, formulations. Um, and so the one that is um, currently FDA approved and is probably more used most often currently is something called Ropeg interferon. Um, and it has been shown to uh, do a good job of controlling uh, hematocrit as well as achieving complete hematologic um, responses, meaning controlling all blood counts um, as well as many of the symptoms of PV. And importantly, it can bring down the, um, the amount of abnormal JAK2, so the JAK2 uh, variant at low frequency. Um, also has its own potential side effects, of course, as many drugs do. Um, and then the other, the, really the only other drug that we use in positive MVR is a JAK inhibitor ruxolitinib, currently approved as a second line therapy after hydroxyurea, but commonly used, uh, is very effective in controlling patient symptoms, um, especially symptoms like itching um, and fatigue. Uh, but also, of course, controls the hematocrit in, in many patients and, and um, allows patients to achieve complete hematologic remi remissions as well. Um, and with this drug also has been shown most recently in the MAGIC PV trial is that um, especially if, as patients remain on the drug for many years, they do achieve uh, molecular responses where we see that JAK2 allele burden goes down it has been correlated with um, event-free survival um, in these patients. So these are sort of the, the landscape that we currently have. Uh, what we're really trying to get to for palisatimia vera is we need drugs that are like clearly more disease modifying, meaning that in addition to controlling the blood counts and helping with the symptoms um, and decreasing the risk of thrombosis, we also want drugs that will clearly decrease progression of disease to later stages of disease such as myelofibrosis or acute leukemia. Um, and then uh, in many patients, uh, the symptoms of PV and the treatments of PV that we offer them can be very uh, difficult to tolerate. And so we, we need medications that allow us to, um, to help with, with those issues. So these drugs that are um, affecting the hepcidin pathway uh, potentially could really improve patients' ability to um, improve their quality of life because of this decreased need for therapeutic phlebotomies.